Hi, this is lesson 2.3, solving linear inequalities using multiplication and division. You should be on page 68. In this lesson, you will learn how to solve inequalities by multiplying or dividing by positive numbers. You will learn how to solve inequalities by multiplying or dividing by negative numbers. And you will also learn how to use inequalities to solve real life problems. Let's talk about our first core concept, multiplying or dividing by positive numbers. We have a multiplication and division property of equality. And as you might remember from the chapter one, if you multiply or divide each side of an inequality by the same positive number, it will produce an equivalent inequality. So this property that I'm pointing to is kind of the sister property of the multiplication property of equality or the division property of equality. It's, it's just saying as long as you do the same thing to each side of an equality, it will stay equivalent. Here would be some examples of that. Um, like right here, negative six is less than eight. If I multiply both sides by positive two, I'll get negative 12 is less than 16. That's still true, that's equivalent. Or six is greater than negative eight. If I divide each side by two, I would get three greater than negative four. Now you notice I divided each side by the same amount and I still have a true inequality. Three is greater than negative four. That's the multiplication or division property of inequality. As long as you do the same to each side, your inequality will stay true. Okay, so let's try a couple here. Let's do these two. For the first question, they want us to solve x over 8 is greater than negative 5. So the first step, write the inequality on your paper. I have to get rid of divide by 8. Remember, think onion. I have to get rid of divide by 8. How do I do that? Well, I hope you see I'm going to multiply each side by 8. So you can see I did that here and here which would cancel the eights out on the left, and x would be greater than negative 40, which is still a true statement. Now I need to graph that. So I put an open circle at negative 40, and I'm shading right, as you can see here in the book. So they ask us to solve and graph. I will provide graph paper for you to make the graphing easier. Let's go to the next question. Um, negative 24 greater than equal 3x. Write the problem down. I have to get rid of that times 3. So I would divide each side by 3. You can see that here. 3 divided by 3 cancels and I get negative 8 is greater than equal x, which is the same thing as x is less than or equal negative 8. So you can see a closed circle at negative 8 because we have equal and we're shading to the left as you can see in this picture. So I think that's pretty simple, pretty basic. We're just using that concept as long as you do the same thing to each side of an, of an inequality, the inequality is true. What I'd like you to do is pause the video now and I'd like you to try numbers one and two. I want you to solve the inequality and then quickly graph it in your notes. Pause the video and do that. All right, I'm back. And for this first question, number one, where they had n over seven is greater than equal negative one, to get rid of divide by 7, you can see I multiplied both sides by 7. Divide by 7 times 7 cancels. I have n on the left and negative 1 times 7 is negative 7 on the right. n would be greater than equal negative 7. So you can see right here, I graph that right on this number line. Open circle at negative 7 and shading everything to the right. 
on the second question. To get W by itself, I have to get rid of times one-fifth, so I'm dividing each side by one-fifth. Don't forget to put parentheses around your fraction when you place this in your calculator, and you should be getting negative 32 is greater than equal W, which would be the same thing as W is less than or equal to negative 32. So now I'm going to graph this. I change my number line to tens, so negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. Negative 32 would be about right here. Close circle, close circle because it could equal negative 32, and I want the values less than that, which is why I'm shading left. So any of the values at negative 32 or left of that would be a solution. Okay, let's talk about multiplying or dividing by negative numbers now. Got to be careful when we do that with, when we work with inequalities and we multiply or divide by negatives. This is called the multiplication and division property of inequality. And it says when multiplying or dividing each side of an inequality by the same negative number, the direction of the inequality symbol must be reversed to produce an equivalent inequality. So, the key words here, if you multiply or divide each side of an inequality by a negative, and I'm underlining it, you must reverse the inequality symbol to get an equivalent inequality. I would definitely get that in your notes. Let's look at some examples, like look at this problem. Negative 6 is definitely less than 8. If you multiply both sides by negative 2, do you notice in the book, let me get a highlighter, they reverse the inequality as they wrote multiply by negative 2 on each side. You see how it went from less than to greater than? Well, negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12, and negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. Do you see how this new statement is still true? 12 is bigger than negative 16. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, you have to reverse the inequality. I, you know, I could put five stars around this thing. This is super important. Let's look at this one. 6 greater than negative 8. If I divide each side by negative 2, do you notice how I flip the inequality symbol as I did the division? I still get a true statement. 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3, and negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4. That's still true. Negative 3 is definitely less than 4. Let's look at these examples. Let's look at this first one. We have 2 is less than y divided by negative 3. So write the problem down. Step 2. To get rid of divide by negative 3, we have to multiply each side by negative 3. Make sure you reverse the inequality symbol when you do the division. So can you see that? I think I'll just circle it in yellow. You notice how the inequality got reversed. And negative 3, and dividing by negative 3 and um, multiplying by negative 3 cancel, so I have y in the right, and negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. So negative 6 is bigger than y, which means y is less than negative 6, and you graph it. Let's look at the next one. We're going to write the problem down first. I have to get rid of that times negative 7, so we'll divide each side by negative 7. Don't forget to reverse the inequality symbol as you do that. You can see it went from less than to greater than. These cancel. I have y in the left, and negative over negative is a positive. 35 divided by 7 is 5, so the solution would be y greater than equal 5, so we have a closed circle at 5, shading right. Pause the video, and I'd like you to try 5, 7, and 9. Okay, and I'm back, and for number 5, we have to get rid of divide by negative 4. So you'll notice I decided to multiply both sides by negative 4 as I did that. Can you see how I reversed my inequality? I have P greater than negative 28. 
in 7. I got to get z by itself. I have to get rid of that multiplication of negative 1 tenth. So I'm dividing each side by negative 1 tenth. As I divided, you notice how my inequality symbol got flipped. Uh, 1 divided by negative 1 tenth is negative 10, and that would be less than equals z. Or I could rewrite it as I'm showing you here. z is greater than equal negative 10. Or for number 9, to get rid of times negative 2, I have to divide by negative 2. Don't forget to flip your inequality. r is less than equal 11. Now they want me to graph these. So for number 5, p greater than negative 28, I got to change my scale. I'm going by tens. Negative 28 would be about just to the right of negative 30, and I'm shading right. So there's a picture of question 5 in a graph. Question 7, I had z greater than equal negative 10. Well, here's a picture a uh, closed circle at negative 10, and you can see I'm shading to the right. And finally, divide, when I divided by negative 2 on each side, I got r is less than equal 11. So on a number line, and you can see that here, I have a closed circle at 11, and I'm shading left. To finish up, modeling with mathematics. You earn $9.50 per hour at your summer job. Write and solve an inequality that represents the number of hours you need to work to buy a digital camera that costs $2.47. So we know the wage and we know the cost of the camera and you need an inequality. So here would be a verbal model to help us. My hourly wage times the number of hours I work has to be more than or equal to the cost of the camera. Well, my hourly wage was nine and a half bucks an hour. I don't know how many hours I got to work. That should be more than or equal to 247. That's the cost of the camera. So there's my inequality. 9.5 times n is greater than or equal to 247. To solve this, I got to use the division property of equality. I'll divide each side by 9.5. That's a positive, so the inequality doesn't change. And you notice I'm getting n is greater than or equal 26. So I have to at least work 26 hours to earn enough to buy that camera. I can check it. If I take 9.5 times 26, I get 247. So that's that's going to get me what I need, okay? Um, I think that's the end of the video. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.